No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I got Cliff and Gunner with me. What the fuck is up, boys? What's good? What's good? Hey. Excellent. How are you guys doing? Hey, so uh, first let's get some introductions so you guys can tell us uh, who you are, where you're coming from, etc. Oh, uh, hey, I'm Gunner. Um, I take pictures. You know, I'm pretty <laughs> one-dimensional. I don't have any other talents. I just take a bunch of pictures. You're the photographer of this duo. Yeah. Cliff, explain yourself. Yeah, um, Cliff Skywalker. I am... Um, Pretty much, uh, I work. I work for. I work with uh, Ill Roots. Right. I handle the uh, the day to day for the uh, the website, and then I also um, host like host parties, events, right, concerts and stuff. Just got done with the uh, the Ilmore yeah, at yeah. South by Southwest hosting so, that. So, so, yeah. so let's start with you. Let, tell me how did you uh, how did you first get involved with working in the industry, and also where are you guys from in general? Because I need to know this first. I'm from Atlanta. Is that cat supposed to be here? That cat is definitely <laughs> supposed to be here. You never seen him before? <laughs> Yo, that's that's. <laughs> is that Holy cat shit. supposed to be here? Like <laughs> the other alternative is that the cat is just like a surprise cat. No, Holy shit. Okay. I'm. Not, I don't blame you for reacting that way because I will admit he's a very strange cat, very okay, large cool. cat. Also, I just want to say it's 4:20. It is for exactly. Do you guys get high off the of Indonesia? No, you don't smoke weed. I'm sober 24 seven. Sober 24 seven. That's cool. Occasionally, like Occasionally. not not much though. Like I haven't smoked. Man, the last time, the last time either even ingesting weed was uh, I ate edibles uh, at a, at a, uh, with Wiz Khalifa and was gone. Well, okay, he, he just handed I, you a brownie or something. Can I can I have a confession? Yeah, I smoked Friday. You did your first time ever? <laughs> Not my first time ever, but we went to it's this place called Weed Maps and they had they were giving out free weed, so I was like, it's free weed. Free weed, but how did you smoke it? Bong? No, they already have it rolled up. Oh, That's the thing. Okay, yeah. They make you smoke. It's like, it's theirs. Because you hand somebody a chunk of weed, it's kind of confusing for them. Yeah. I don't know how like, to roll at all, but you if you give me a, yeah, me a rolled up joint, I can smoke it. I would like to say I'm an expert level backward roller, and I've never rolled a joint or a spliff ever. Damn. Damn. And I really I want to work deep. on that in the future because people act like I'm a fucking idiot. For, for not knowing how. Or a genius or a savant at the shit. Like Thank you. you know what I'm <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys are from Atlanta, both of you? No, no, I'm from You're... I'm from I'm from Pontiac, Michigan, which okay. is uh it's thirty minutes, about thirty minutes north of Detroit. It's kinda like it has its own like culture and style, but it's there are, you know, microcosms that parallel it to Detroit. So Okay. What are, are there similarities that it has in a state of economic ruin like Detroit or Yeah, yeah. like it's yeah, like the um City has a deficit. Right. Um, they're trying to bring it back. City had, city had an emergency manager. I think they maybe had one before Detroit, but there's there's all sorts of parallels. Like, how's the drinking water? Uh, in Pontiac is good, and Detroit is good. But and we we are uh, we're about forty minutes cl- north. Of, we're forty minutes south of Flint. But right. Yeah, yeah. But has that Flint water crisis? Is that like is that a huge thing out there? Because yeah. when you see the videos of the fucking dirty ass water, it is. Yeah, man. Hard to imagine. The, and that. The, the governor is just, the governor super fucked up. In denial about super it or whatever, because he might have known he about it. He needs to resign and just take that L and keep it moving. But like, isn't his whole thing that now he's claiming that he's going to uh, to drink it for the next thirty days to prove bullshit? Because he's gonna filter it and shit. It doesn't mean anything, right? Yeah. Ain't nobody believing that shit. He's just, he's just blowing smoke to like get the get the people in the suburbs right. and stuff like. On his dick, but nah. But what kind of upbringing did you have? You you were a middle class kid, you're a hood kid, what? Uh, I was basically I was brought up middle class. Like my mother, my mother was um, my mother was the uh, I stayed. I was a single parent household. My mother was a, uh, she was uh, the city attorney of Pontiac, okay. and then she's now she's a she's a judge. Really? And, yeah. And then my dad. So is she's there. twelve. <laughs> not quite. Not quite. Twelve adjacent. <laughs> adjacent. Twelve adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> Twelve of Jays, but and then my uh, my dad, my dad actually stays in Atlanta, and he's a uh, he's a consultant and like one of the best grant writers. Like, does ever. your dad have broads in Atlanta? <laughs> no comment. Yo, can I say something? Designer, your dad has broads in Atlanta. Designer is the best rapper. I love of Designer, all bro. Time. But you like other songs by Designer? Zombie Walk is a. That's the only other one I've heard. Yeah, I, I, and I, and I saw him perform at the Ilmore. He performed a song called Pluto. Oh Amazing. yeah, I forgot. So you respect yeah. the designer, the I designer. Love, I love everything. I've actually, I met him. You met him. I I came on my hotel one day and he was just outside. Did I, you photograph him? Yeah, yeah. He I did. He did probably. He did one of the like first yeah, photo, photo shoots sh- with designer. Because like, if you go to his Instagram, he got like the hood nigga like 
Brooklyn scammer type Instagram, bunch of emojis. Designer looks like a scammer. That's yeah, what I'm that's saying. What is, this yeah. motherfucker is that. That should be his his image. Like that whole song should be about scamming. But it exactly. does. It says the word scamming. But it, they should rewrite the whole song to be about scamming because I look at him and I'm like, yo, you're too young to sell crack. You're a scammer. Exactly. <laughs> word. <laughs> Brooklyn over here, he knows. <laughs> right, that's totally right. There's forgot. a check. Right there's a check is over in the corner. Right there, Brooklyn. he's got a fake oh, checkbook yeah. in his pocket right now. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's be chilling with the designer. But uh, designer is like the new Bobby Schmurder though. He's like the new hot boy out of Brooklyn. I tweeted that. I tweeted uh, Bobby Schmurder. Wa- <laughs> Bobby Schmurder walk so designer could fly. I tweeted that. <laughs> wow. That's actually that's, that's hard. That's a popping tweet. I missed Yo, that one. You ought to like license that to me, and I'll put it on my Twitter, and I'll get hella retweets, and I then I'll you. like pass you some retweets. As I got well. you. Okay. I got you straight up. We could do that. That actually makes sense to me. So wait, wait. All right. So what do we need to know? How do you get involved in the industry? How do you get interested in hip hop? Yeah, I mean, hip hop was always around. Um, in junior high and high school, like because it was always around, it was more like kind of had it on the back burner when I was in. Junior high and high school, I was gravitating more towards jazz oh, okay. music. Um, just like playing, I play. You pick up an instrument in fifth grade; it's like mandatory. But then, like, what'd you pick up? Uh, saxophone. Okay. And then you played um, a saxophone. Yeah, I forgot to tell you about that. But yeah, so you look like you got some good pipes oh. on you. <laughs> You look like you could blow a horn. Oh my god! <laughs> but <Pause>. yes, yeah. <laughs> junior no high. No designer. <laughs> junior high. Uh, picked up the horn, and then uh, as I got in high school, got like good at it, and was able to. You know, it opened the doors for a lot of things like um, we were talking before, but um, two summers in high school, uh, I toured, I went overseas and toured Europe with the jazz band for, right. uh, for two summers. And got some nookie. <laughs> you, you, you know about this? He got his first ass in I Germany. Know, I ain't know about none of that. And yeah, I really nah. want to, what was your experience like you go to Europe for the first time? Was it, was it amazing for you coming from a small place? I, I think, shit? I think at the time I was, uh, part of me was narrow minded. Right. And a little like myopic towards the whole shit, but then like. The second time, I was like, okay, I'm going to like actually enjoy myself and understand that this is something that not a lot of kids can do, especially my age. Right, yeah. So I was like, I, I, I just took it all in and enjoyed it and yeah. like made sure to put myself in the perspective of like looking at the bigger picture and realizing where I'm at. Right. So, yeah. That's dope. Yeah. So tell us the story about losing your hymen to, <laughs> to a girl in Germany. Man, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm try to keep it short as possible because I said. definitely want <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of going in. It's, it's <laughs> noon, so I kind of have a few little liners here. Yeah, but yeah, man. Basically, um, one of the stops we stayed with a uh, host family. Uh-huh. Host family had a banging daughter that was my age at the moment, and uh, I think we stayed for two or three days. And the last night before we left, she was she was TTG. She was with it. Really, and I was just like, bet. Like, yeah. But yeah. how would you describe being black in Germany with different. chicks? Yeah, because they, they've never seen anything like this. It's a completely different thing. It's, it's different. Like, they, they kind of look at you. They look at you. They stare at you, but not in a disrespectful way. More so, like... Fascinated. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like, they touch your hair. <laughs> it's crazy, but I don't know. My my experiences overseas was dope. I enjoyed myself. Hell yeah. Enjoyed myself immensely. That's dope. So how did you start working in the in the rap industry? So when um when I was in college... Um, one of the guys, two of the guys in uh, Big Sean's crew mm-hmm. um, were like, yo, you should start a blog. And since your name is Cliff, call it Cliff Notes. Right. Shout out to Tony Gumbo for that. But um, so well, I just what started. What year are we talking? Because it was this the, the, the original blogger era? Because like, yeah, blog, a- blogs don't seem like they matter as much anymore, but they were huge at, the, at a certain point. This was, I was, I was a little late. I was a little late to it. Um, I think it was, oh... 07. Oh, well, that's still pretty oh, early. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it seemed late from like, because when I got on, I, I saw like the Nile rights and two right. dumb boys. Uh, I feel like the blog era was officially over in like 2012. 11 maybe is when like social networking took off so hard that not not that blogs are ever be completely like irrelevant at all yeah it's just they stop being like the primary like thing like it, it used to be the biggest thing in the world to get your shit posted on there right yeah and no, that, that only really lasted a few years but still, i still i still mess with, i still mess oh, with I saw it too, like, yeah. he's like the godfather of all this shit Shout SK. SK. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, i've actually top. emailed sk trying to get that interview and he ain't, Man, he ain't me back i got the highest respect for sk but yeah. um yeah so um i started my own site was um and it and it did did pretty well. Um, was uh was actually actually premiered two of uh, Big Sean's songs off uh, Finally Famous Volume Two. So how do you how do you work that situation? Um, just kind of knew each other. Okay. Kind of knew each other. Uh, kind of were always kind of always kind of knew each other, respected each other. And then when the site started picking up, was just like man, 
you know, if you have some songs, let's let's drop them real quick. And we right. dropped a song intro, and then I think the song called Billionaire, which was like had a DJ Khaled sample. But okay. um, so site was picking up when Sean was dropping his first album. Um, Mike Carson and Mike Wax of uh, Ill Roots were with him for Wait, the rollout. But so is Big Sean huge at this point, or no, not uh, as huge? He he was. This was so from the time we first met to dropping the thing. His uh his. You know, his name was starting to build. And but build he was still an underground rapper, basically. Yeah, yeah, I would say that. I would say that at, at that time. He wasn't signed yet. No, he was. He was signed. So he it's was weird signed. for me to think of Big Sean pre being Big Sean because he's hugely popular or whatever now, and I didn't really know him when he was an underground rapper. Yeah. yeah, no, he was. He was. He was. He was signed fairly early, but he was signed, but still putting out putting out his tape, like doing his own thing. Right. Yeah. And then, like I. From my point of view, I think the the they saw his buzz build. Label believed in him, got him going, and then so when he dropped his first album, um, Mike Carson, and Mike Wax were uh, with him, and then I met Mike Carson and Mike Wax through Sean. And so those are, are those the two dudes who started Ill Roots? Yeah. Okay. And so you meet them, and like, what's that conversation like? It was or? all love. Like right. we knew of each other. I, I believe we knew of each other, but didn't know each other. So when we first met, it was just all love. And right. then a year later, Mike Carson and Mike Wax were doing video work for Jay-Z and Kanye on the Watch the Throne tour. Oh, wow. And they sent a tweet saying that they needed somebody to, uh, to help them with the site. And I had, their, I had uh, Mike Wax's number. Uh -huh. So I hit him, and I was just like, yo, I just saw this tweet. was good? And um, they were, he was like, oh, word, dope. Uh, let's, we'll, we'll talk about it. And then a couple months later, um, he hit me back, and he was like, yo, I think like, we want you to, to be a part of this. And so they like tested me out for like a couple months, and then... Finally, they were like, yeah, we'll push it. We'll so for those you. who don't know, Ill Roots is a, a very uh, popular hip-hop blog. But So what did you know about it going into it, and how would you describe the site to somebody who doesn't really know all about it? I'd say it's, 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 de it's a it's – a, nah, it's, it's kind of it's past the blog since you were talking about how the blogging is over. It's kind of um, – Well, it's a little more comparable to, like, World Star in terms of the layout because it's got the square. It's, and it's yeah, primarily yeah. video-based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, like, video-based, hip-hop-based. But we cover – it's like more so multimedia now because it's we unlike have, World Star because there's nobody like fighting over a chicken sandwich <laughs> or something like yeah. Shout out to their Vine comps though. Their Vine comps True. are hard. Well, World Star's fire, but World Star's World Star. <laughs> right, Roots right. doesn't necessarily want to be World Star. Yeah, yeah but um, we uh, we have their uh, so it's multimedia. We do we have the website, but then we also have the clothing line. Mm -hmm. We also have our own 24 hour streaming radio station. Oh okay. And then we also you know we partner and do events like we had the Elmore. We did a uh, we did an event. With a uh, Yachty, right. the, the art show with mm -hmm. Young Jake. Shout out to Jake. Yep. And um, I was yeah, at so that. I, I filmed that on my iPhone and put it on YouTube. It is <laughs> not. I'm not making money from it, but it has like 150 thousand. That video views. is hard. I fuck with is that it? video. At that one means. point in the video, Yachty looks right at me, points at me because I had interviewed yeah. him like an hour before this. Oh yeah. And he just points right at me like Lil Boat. No, he yeah. doesn't say Lil Boat, but I wanted to say <laughs> Lil Boat right there. But yeah. Continue. But yeah. So uh, the site the site covers a lot of bases at this moment right now, and, okay. and we're just now try, just trying to progress and keep those. Those bases afloat and you know increase their popularity and plop. So publicity. how long you been working with them? I started in 2010. Okay. I believe at the end of 2010. So mm -hmm. this is like, damn, it's like six been years for a while. Yeah. yeah. So so when you first start working for them, because like this is why I think that you guys end both of have, 2011. I'm sorry. Okay. You guys both have interesting perspective on, on the industry because you're both doing things that are totally outside of like people normally think. Oh, I'm going to be a rapper. I'm going to be a. Right. I'm going to make beats. Like I think it's dope that you're a photographer who's doing coil for himself and that you're in the whole blogging side of things. So I think kids could definitely get a lot from this. But yeah, yeah. I, don't worry, I'm going to get to you too. But so yeah, so sure. yeah, 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 sure. But so when you start blogging for them, like how would you describe this? Was it hard for you to kind of like pick up on what to do? How do you go about finding stuff? What do they tell you? Um, it was kind of the the reason why I think part of the reasons why uh, I was they they you know I jo I joined them because I think they they knew I had some type of vision right and knew kind of what our readership wants to listen to wants to watch right. wants to read so I think it was just a, a a thing of that I hope that was that answering the question kind of no I mean that that is what it is is like you know when you're hiring somebody to help run a blog it's kind of a weird thing because it's like it is mostly about taste like yeah. you need somebody who understands that like oh this new Playboy Cardi song is worth a post and that this song that, you know, because it might be somebody sampled Playboy Cardi and tried to throw it on the hook and tried to trick you. It's like you actually kind of have to get the culture to be able to make blog posts because there's a lot of bullshit that people are going to be trying to pass off on you. Yeah, yeah, no, and then like 
tons of emails every day oh, seeing yeah, the shit. Yeah, and it's yeah, just yeah. like, like you know, you you kind of just it's kind of like a, a instinct. Like mm-hmm. you kind of just know right. what's what's dope and what's not. But you you also have to give an ear to everything and listen to it. And you have to keep your ear to the streets in the sense that like, you know, it's very important for me to like read Twitter every day because I feel like if I don't read Twitter, then I don't really know what the kids are fucking with or I don't really know what people are just organically talking about, you know? Even if you miss like an hour or two right. and you jump on something, it's like you're late. Right. And that, people be like, you're late. You're late. Like, fuck are you doing? That's a weird thing running a blog, especially is that if you are the first dude to post something, it's like your post could be thousands of retweets. You could be killing it. And yeah. then if you're the guy who posted six hours later, it could be nothing. It varies. because that. But then sometimes you have a certain situation where an artist might mess with, you know, a website or they see it yeah they'll just be ha- they'll just have their phone on them and see it be like oh retweet and then the hits go up it's right. crazy it's weird man i like to be like one foot in because i feel like i'm one foot in one foot out of like the Shout industry out in general Savage. one foot in hard yeah i really want to rap this trapping's what i'm about cold portrait of a 21 Savage. why you look like him you need to get the the <laughs> what? <laughs> so like twenty one times? A little bit. That's deep. No, you Yo, gotta, you, you gotta, gotta kill a few you people. Gotta, you gotta tell you gotta tell him when I was texting you about uh, twenty one savage. How are you like? He d- he doesn't talk. Oh, he doesn't. Talk. He doesn't talk a lot. He's very quiet. He was supposed to come here to do the interview, but his manager didn't really like understand what I was trying to do. Yeah. Like, she was like, "Oh, come to the video shoot of the interview." I'm like, "I kind of need him here." Yeah, I met twenty one at the Elmore, and I was telling Gunner like, I was like, "Man." I was like, I met 21, dog, and he, like, showed love. Like, oh, okay. I, I didn't think he would. I thought he would just be like, but no, nah, he was he was cool. He was cool as fuck. Was like, he talking? Yeah, he was, he was just like. I've been it, around him 30 times. I've never been <laughs> yeah, he he's made, very, well, me, like, cold. Though. I'll rephrase that. He gave me, like, one sentence. Oh, okay. Like, one sentence. He wasn't, like, having a conversation. Oh, with you were thankful for the sentence. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. 21 cold. 21, 21, 21. <laughs> um, yeah, like, that's the thing about 21, though, is that it's, like, He's always billed as like the realest street rapper. Mm. His vibe is like, it, it just the way he is in a room or the way he looks on camera is like, regardless of how much shit he did, I'm not doubting whatever he says he's done. He just gives off that vibe. Exactly. He's the new Death Row by himself. Yeah, yeah, you really feel like he is like a killer when he's around you. That's perfect. That's what I like in my rappers. Exactly. I like to believe that they have killed exactly. and they may kill again. He's the only person. <laughs> he's the only person that's believable over the past like. 10 years or something crazy like that. Who else do you believe as a rapper, though? Who, who else really strikes you as, like, he did all that shit? Mm. No one. Really? Honestly. What about out, out, out Maybe the Thug. Thug? Yeah, Thug. Thug. That's about yeah, it. Yeah. But Thug trying to transition from that whole lane. You think that Thug has toned down the violent content? Of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. definitely. He got that. He got new teeth now, too. That's like, what I'm you know. He's too high of a profile to be back on. How, uh, how important are teeth to you guys in a rapper? I like a rapper with a nice set of teeth. I don't know. I just know when I when I saw when I saw Thug got his new teeth, I was like, oh, he's he's going up. Like it's he's about to go up so tough for him. Right. Like yeah, and they like white and clean. Well, he's been had the teeth. He just had gold ten the whole time. Oh, for real? Yeah, he's been had those teeth. I just remember he signed his deal with Gucci, and the deal it was to get him new teeth. Really? Yeah, he got new teeth as soon as he. You, you want to get on the mic too? <laughs> get in here. If you, if you gotta talk, you gotta be on the mic. I just gotta throw that out there because we can't really hear you. <laughs> That's all good. No, but I mean, I'm just saying teeth is like a weird thing to think about. Like a lot of rappers come out with fucked up teeth and then they get them fixed within like the first year. Except for Fabulous. Except for, well, that's just the one chip, right? And J. Cole. He was holding on to that chip. What is that? Fabulous just never wanted to get the chip tooth fixed. It makes him. Xavier Wolf had horrible teeth when I first started hanging out with him. He got those fixed. He did. Yeah. Shouts to him. His shit was all fucked up. We used to always say, oh, you're trying to get that Danny Brown swag with those teeth. Mm -hmm. But Danny Brown's probably the most prolific shitty toothed rapper. He's a junkie. Yeah. You guys nah, are all sitting to... here like, I don't want to offend no, my political no, connects no, no, by talking I, shit no, about their nah. dental hygiene. Nah, man. Shouts to Danny, man. Ain't, no, ain't nobody. Ain't nobody uh, Danny might beat my ass, ass, so I'm not going to say anything about He might him. beat your ass. He's huge. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying like he wants to already. Oh, he's big as hell. I wouldn't be surprised. Danny Brown's huge? What is he, like 6'3"? I don't want to fight him. I weigh 100 pounds. You really weigh 100 pounds? This stuff, you should be a gymnast or something. No? Uh, no. I don't move that much. <laughs> I don't move that much. You have to lean or something? No, nah, you just nah. chilling. I just sit at home and watch wrestling all day. Yeah, you yeah. Adventure time. Well, you're re- you guys are both wrestling fans because you guys both have wrestling that, shirts. Yo, that on. was that was crazy when he came in. I saw. Oh, it's a coincidence. It's, it's, it's super coincidence. It's not intentional. Yeah, I don't. Okay. I, f- I fuck with it. 
I think I think we both we both kind of grew up in the Attitude Era, right? Of okay. like WWE and then WCW and then the Monday Night Wars. I would watch so. that era from afar because I was more of like I was interesting in like ninety one, ninety two. Okay, and then I remember like the Attitude Era was like late nineties, right? Yeah, late nineties, yeah. early two thousands. I think that's when. That's when, like, we really grew up in the shit and, like, started watching it and, like, gravitating towards it. Kids were getting suspended for telling the teacher to suck it. Yo, shit. I, I... That happened yo, in your school, too? I was, yo, I was, I was the just talking school, about the song here the other day. I was yeah. the in-school suspension king, bro. <laughs> Why? You got suspended? Oh, so you got in trouble a lot. You were trapping out the Not detention. really. I was, I, was, I, was, I was getting in trouble, but I was smart enough to, like, jazzy mouth my way out of a lot of trouble that right. I could have gotten in. A kid in high school should put on a mixtape called Trapping Out the Study Hall. <laughs> my work. It might work. It might work for real. I don't know. Um, all right, so where were we? Uh, we were talking when about... When you started working yeah, for Hilbert. Yeah, 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 we, we went, went yeah, on a little tangent linked there up with them. talking about and motherfuckers' then, uh, teeth, yeah. And then, yeah, and then everything just started progressing right. with, the, with the site. Like, so do you do you like the daily grind of, uh, of working on a blog or a website? Like, is, how, how is this for you? Uh, I do. I yeah. do. Um, I think just being able to have music, like, listening to fresh music, mm-hmm. making, making sure, like, music, the... The aspect of listening to something and know it's new, right? Um, and not knowing kind of what to expect, I think that brings a little bit more excitement into it than, you know, a basic nine to five job. But so you open your email and you got a hundred emails sitting there, and like yeah. almost all of them are, are new songs or new videos. Is this, is this overwhelming for you? Like, oh my god, this is an insane amount of shit that I'm expected to check out here. Excuse me. Um, not, not really, because, mm-hmm. excuse me. At this point, it's like. Uh, it's it's kind of like it's just regular. Right. It's more it's it's more regular than anything else. Or waking up and having to go on Twitter and see what I've missed. It's, right. regu- it's like regular now. But it's weird for people like us because like for me waking up and I go and get coffee and then I sit there and I read fucking seven hours worth of Twitter ever since I've been sleeping. That's like my job. Like yeah. I have to really like make time for that you know yeah, like yeah. which is a weird thing because i mean for most people flicking through twitter a couple times a day or 10 times a day that's just pleasure you know Hell yeah. it's like it's weird when it becomes responsibility or it's weird when listening to music becomes your job your responsibility you have to you have to listen to the new that's yeah. how i feel like i didn't listen to young thug tape for like two weeks when it came out and i felt like i was like skipping work you know <laughs> it's like i should know about this like right. i should should know about whatever he's saying i don't know yeah man but and then it's just like I don't know, being on Twitter, being on Twitter, seeing it. That's the, where you feel like you get the majority of your stuff? It's not submissions and emails and stuff? Um, it's a mix. Okay. It's a mix, but yeah. Yeah. But shout out to Gunner. Gunner's one of the best on Twitter. He's one of the funniest on Twitter ever. You like, kill it on Twitter? Psh, yes. I need to know about this. He's lying to you, dog. Come on, man. I don't follow him yet. I'll I got to get on, on Twitter. This. Really? That's a lie. That's a lie. Gunner drops fire tweets on really? the regular when he's not at Coachella or not. You know what's having, what's both of you's best tweet that you've ever composed? My best tweet ever was I don't trust these hoes, so I might kiss one of my bros at midnight. <laughs> when, it was, when it was New Year's Eve, that's the best. I can't get better. Than that. How many retweets did that get? That's funny. <laughs> it got it got a bunch of a lot of retweets, but it got people it was like, "What the fuck? Like, what's wrong with you?" Yeah, yeah, I could definitely see that. That's a that's a, a weird uh, it's a that's weird thing to say, tweet. but I, I like know. it. I think my best tweet was um, the Isley Brothers Contagious video. Uh, I took a screenshot of it, and I was like, uh, mo- a great moment in black history, uh, Ronald Isley wearing a mink coat over the uh, Celtics Paul Pierce jersey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was one of my best tweets. That's hard. Yeah. I definitely support that and respect that. For sure, for sure. <laughs> I'm trying to think about what my But nah, Gunner, are. don't let Gunner lie to you, dog. Gunner goes off on Twitter. Gunner, tell, tell us some shit about yourself. Tell, yeah, tell us where you're coming from. Where am I coming from? Yeah. Uh, you know, just a little kid, Atlanta, Georgia. Right. So you're you're a little kid from Atlanta, Georgia. What uh, how did you, what what kind of kid were you when you were when you were young? Tell us a little bit about your upbringing. Um, I was a kid that was skating to school. Skater. Yeah. I stopped though. Why? Why did you stop skating? That shit hard. It is hard. But you're little, so I feel like being little is good for skating. You that's can kind of tumble and fly. I, that's what I thought. That's what you thought. How old are you right now? I just turned 24. 24. Okay. Yeah. So you're you're a kid skating around in Atlanta. Um, at what point do you become exposed to hip hop, and like how how does it make you oh, feel? Oh, I was one of those sus kids that that used to argue about hip hop. Like this is real hip hop. Oh, like, you were a, a nerdy like, backpack like kid. Like atmosphere okay. and Lupe and right. all of that. I was like, yo, this is fucking hip hop. And so you. Were like, I was, fuck Young Jeezy. Yeah, I was banging on all of that. Two stuff. chains. Well, yeah. he wasn't really out like that. Then, then. Yeah, and boy. then Future dropped Dirty Sprite. That's what changed it for you. That's all I had to hear. Really? That's all I had to hear. And then you went out and bought a pint of Activist. 
I was tr- I did. I did you really? I was sipping lean. Who'd you hit? Who's the plug? It was some name somebody on full name, <laughs> phone number. <laughs> Hell no. It was some it was somebody on Bankhead. Me and my uh, brother Jameer, we went to go buy lean because, because of this mixtape. Man, Dirty Sprite changed Atlanta. I'm trying to tell you. Really, future. It's, listen to see, this. You're ruining lives. See, I, I started going to the club. Like it was it was crazy. But Dirty Sprite came out what like 2009? 2010. 2010. Yeah. Okay, and so. Um, what, so you like threw away your atmosphere posters at this point or whatever? And you just I, went straight trap? Everything was trapped from that from that point on. Man. Okay. Were you always interested in photography? Um, uh, I took photography class in high school, but I failed it. Okay. Yeah. So just what, you didn't weren't that crazy about it? it they That shit was different. Right. It was having me like build a camera and take it outside. Oh, like I in, know, right? Like a box or some weird shit. See, when, I, yeah, oh, because it was still film when you were in yeah. school? Yo, because that was the same shit when I was in school is that like, I... I think I would have got into photography, but I wasn't trying to be in the dark room, yeah, dipping my hand in these gross ass cases. You know, I like, I could see myself being into photography if I was a kid now, where taking the yeah, they, photos the, is, you get it. That's what I'm saying. Like, my little brother, he's in high school now, he'd be telling me about, like, all the shit. They got the Mac Labs. Exactly, and yeah. They teach you Photoshop. Isn't that funny like that. to think how much shit changes like that? Or you want to know another one? I was learning cursive when I was in school. <laughs> Do they teach kids cursive anymore? I don't, I don't know. think so. I do don't you guys think they have should. Do you, do you I, learn about it? Yeah, I, yeah, I had I to. Too. I remember writing full ass papers in cursive. I went to a private school though, so Me it too. was super strict. So they taught you cursive? Uh, high school. It's crazy. And French. Really? Yeah. To, uh, teach me anything besides cursive. You know, teach me another language. Teach me like people. You barely have to write with your hands right. in modern day U.S. lifestyle. Like anytime I have to write something down, I feel like man, this is some weird old school yeah, shit. Somebody that I asked used to me for back a, in the day. someone asked me for a pen at Coachella, and I started laughing. A pen? What the fuck? I got a pen. <laughs> what am I a fucking accountant or something? That's so weird. Yeah, yeah I carry a pen on me. I'm I'm in jail. I'm gonna stab somebody with it. It's like the only reason you ever need a like, pen. What do you need a pen for? That's crazy. So, uh, so you get interested in in, in lean and dirty sprite oh. and future. Man, then my what? dad cannot see this. Your dad will see this. I'm gonna personally send it to him. Yeah, I follow I, my I follow all my family on Instagram. Okay, just don't post the screenshot. Fuck Man, it, they can find fuck. out about it. No, sorry. you're saying that you did this at one point. Now that you're still doing it, I think it's in the past. Like that, they, won't, they won't get. You know what I'm saying? Like I know my mom. My mom and my dad are gonna see this, and I'm just. You not I have talk, no filter. Not talk, so. I said I did lean, bro. That's deep. They gonna think I'm a junkie. Who gives a fuck? You try it one time. Did, Kids do crazy did, things. Though. I only did it one time. Though. I wasn't like See? addicted to lean. You a whole you a whole new person. That now. shit you sucks. Good. It sucks. Lean's horrible. Why don't you like it? It makes your stomach feel like tightens up your stomach. Yeah, okay. yeah. Weird. I did it a couple times, and I was just ended up falling asleep for like twelve hours, which is kind of embarrassing. It, it would just it would just make me sleepy. I will just fall asleep. Any kind of pills or anything, I just fall asleep. No, I never really. did the pills. I can't no, it. yeah. It's just like, I don't know. It's just not really conducive to being like a productive human being. You know? I like shrooms. That's about it. Yeah, that's a different type I of thing. Try, I, w- I need to try this. Dude. I want to. You need guys to want to try it right now? Right now? No, no, no. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't, don't want to either. Shroom. No, but the good thing podcast. is if we took shrooms right now, we'd probably be done the podcast by the time they kicked in. Damn. Yeah, but Alfredo might have to come over here and click the button and fucking export the file for me and stuff because I might be too gone to like know how. <laughs> might delete the whole thing to be honest. Damn. I don't know. I'm not really big on shrooms either. Um, all right. So so where's your life go from there, Gunner? Uh, well. And did you have any well-known friends or anything? Because I see you with all these rappers and everything. You didn't. You didn't know friend? anybody when you were younger. Uh, I didn't know. I'm linked up with my friends. They're called Two Nine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Those are like my friends. So that was your school. first plug into like shooting photos with anybody or whatever? Uh, well, when I met them, they weren't really rapping. Okay. It was just cool. Like, like Curtis had like hit me up on Facebook and was like, it was slick gay on some gay shit. He was gay? I mean, we were both kind of, it was like, yo, you're cool. Let's hang out. You keep saying that you're sus and I found this very interesting. Man, like. Is this gonna be the coming out interview? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Wait, oh, are, you, oh, are you gay for real? No. I oh, okay. Never mind. No, I gay. Well, there's nothing wrong with it if you are. You know, forcing the coming out. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> you're making it like very, uh, like you're acting like you have something to hide right now that you that you feel weird about. No, you said don't put my hands on the on the table, so I'm like my hands are like just down here. Oh, so that makes you feel weird. You can put your hands on the table, just don't tap. So see, there you go. I was inter- interviewing a dude the other day who was holding the mic with two hands like this, like he was screaming into it at a show or something. It's OD. All right, so how you start taking photos? Or so you're hanging out with this rap crew, two nine. Yeah, uh, well, say I met Curtis in 2009. He just like hit me. He was like, "Yo, like pull up on some." Cause uh, my other friend he did graphic design. Uh huh. So 
he was like, yo, I need this done. Could y'all do this? And he was like, yeah. So, you know, we pulled up on him. I went up doing zero graphics and just. Uh, For the skate company? No, no, no. Oh, zero the number? No, no, we didn't, we didn't do any graphics. Oh, okay. <laughs> we just hung out the whole day. We just went, like, to the mall, you know, did cool shit, invited some girls over. Nice. Uh, and then he started rapping, like, probably, like, two years after that. He started, like, taking it, like, seriously. Okay. Yeah. And then I started doing photography in 2010. Okay. Yeah. So how did how'd you get into it all over again? Um, Was it a need that they had, like, within no, the crew? Not at, not at all. No, you just, like, just, like thought hanging. of it? Well, I brought my camera. Uh, my dad gave me, like, $300 for my birthday. Mm. And I went to this party, and my friend was selling a camera. He was just telling me, like, yeah, I've got this camera. I'm trying to sell it, blah, blah, blah. Right. I was like, oh, well, I have this money in my pocket, so here you go. And... I just started using the camera. Did you feel like you were uh, talented at it right away, or? Um, no, I right. sucked. <laughs> yeah, really. You just kind of built from there. How'd you How'd you go about learning? Just kept shooting my friends two nine. Right. Far. Yeah. So how'd you at some point expand? I'm looking at your Instagram right now, and you got you photos. Are? Yeah, you got photos oh of the base god. Fucking. Oh, you got Lil classic B. shit, dog. 21, 21, Lil 21. B's fans. Man, like, the first time I shot 21, which was convinced me that he might be a demon. <laughs> none of the pictures, like a demon. None of the pictures came way. out when I got him developed. Really? Oh, oh, Wait, but so oh, you shoot film? Yeah, it's all film. Oh, everything on here is film. Yeah. Why? Why do you do that? What? Why? Uh, you remember that camera I was just telling you about? Yeah. It broke. Oh. In like 2013, and I was going to um, Kanye West show, the Yeezus show. And I wanted to take pictures. But the one like a few months ago? No, he's the the Jesus tour when he had oh when he had okay. the Jesus and all that right. Stuff. So Mask. a couple years ago, yeah. Yeah. So uh, my friend was like, "Yo, I got this camera. You can take it." And it was film, and I didn't know anything about film. Right. So, but you had been shooting digitally prior to this. Yeah, okay. all digital. So then I just took it and I went to the Jesus show and I used it and I was like, "Oh, this is cool." Yeah. So what what do you like about film more than digital though? Because I mean that it's kind of common in like BMX and skate and stuff that people will use film cameras sometimes. Mm-hmm. But I feel like in the hip hop world, it's not really considered normal to be shooting film. Uh, I feel like it's just a chance that you take. Yeah. Because you don't know what the hell anything's about to look like. Like I just I went to I shot Coachella this weekend and <clears throat> I took the film to get developed at this place and all that shit came out horrible. It did. So how does that feel? Like it's it's, it's it more of a it's more of a long cycle. I feel like because instead of like you got a digital camera and you take one photo and then you look at it and you're like oh that sucks and then you take another one and you look at it and you say oh that sucks and then you take another one and it's all right that one's all right. Well, with with, with film it takes time. With film, it's not really the camera or the picture. It's really where you take it to get developed. That's the biggest. Really. Yeah. It's all about how they scan it, how they. Extract your negatives, everything. And so, do you have like a specific place that you prefer to work at with that knows? In Atlanta. Oh, okay. Yeah. But out here, it's fucked up. Yeah, I've never got film developed here. Oh, you haven't tried yet? No, I did. This was my first. And that's the ones that were fucked up. Do you think that the issue is that they just sucked and they didn't yeah, know what they, they were doing? Yeah. It's okay. just the kind of scanner they had. Right. Yeah. How did you guys become friends? Uh, you know, five niggas link up when you five. You just become <laughs> friends with five people. Fi is like the most popular word that people don't talk about. Yeah, like, yeah. The, the, like the mainstream don't realize that every single that kid shit. says F Y E. Yeah. Fi. Yeah. Fi. Use a shit every day. Should be fi. We all three of us are fi. Right now, hell yeah. But um, I think fi, it was so. it was through Twitter, or the not this past Elmore, but Elmore 2015. We were in the same areas and just never. And let me guess, he hit you in the DMs like. Yo, uh, do you need anybody to shoot photos at the event tonight? Hell no. Nah, yeah. <laughs> nah, I get nah. those every day. Nah, like I knew I knew he was a photographer, but his tweets were just so hilarious. Okay. Like my tweets suck. I'm, I'm gonna have to really check out nah, his Twitter. Nah, bro. You got <laughs> or like go to my favorite to see his tweets. Shit are hilarious. And then um after that, we just met. And the first time we met was at the Ilmore this past this past this past Oh, one. so you guys just met no, in real bro, life. I met you before. See, that's what I'm saying. He ain't my real friend. What? You might, it might have gone you off a lean Electro. or something. We didn't, no, 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 bro. We didn't, we didn't really, we didn't meet at True Electro, bro. We were there, but we didn't meet, he's we didn't lying. meet. He's lying. He doesn't realize he's lying. He's got an agenda he's here. lying, bro. We was all staying at this True Electro 2013. 13 was the best shit ever on this podcast. That shit was crazy. Right. Terrio was in our hotel. They had every, they had every artist. Was, Terrio's five. Was staying <laughs> in right the now. same hotel. Every artist was. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Everybody was staying in one hotel. 
That's a problem. Yeah, I remember shooting into the ceiling, just hoping to hit somebody. No, it was just. I just remember it was just a bunch of groupies in the lobby just trying to get chose. Oh, that's fine. I ain't. I've never seen anything like that. They were just literally standing there, like, like on some auction shit, waiting to get picked. Really? Did you put in a bid? Did you hold up the little sign? Nah, I was chilling. Five thousand dollars. I was in the hospitality room. They had free Chipotle. What did they have like a chef preparing it for you, or was it, it was like, a lady in there that she just kept? You could take a bottle. They had a bottle of Jameson, whatever you wanted, you know. Oh, so it wasn't like a Chipotle lady. Mm-mm. See, that's how I know we didn't meet because he was in that room the whole time. You yeah, Chipotle. I was in. That room. Like, I, was in the I would have been there. Room. You would have been in there. Never came to the hospitality room. Never. Oh, you tripping? What do you get when you go to Chipotle? Nothing, cause I don't go to Chipotle. Why not? I don't fuck. With, I don't fuck with Chipotle. Really? They kill niggas. I ain't going there. <laughs> what the E. Coli? Yeah, I ain't going back to no place that kills. Damn, niggas. dude! Fucking the E. Coli scandal has had a huge effect on Chipotle. A yeah. lot of people out there not trusting it. I don't like Chipotle. I like uh, Pancheros. They're like on college campuses, but they're like they like make their own tortillas right in front of you. Really? Like when I was I went to Michigan State and oh, okay. there was a Pancheros right across the street from my dorm. Right. So like that was fire, and the Chipotle was like down the street. So I didn't fuck with it. I fuck. I mess with Pancheros way more. Right. So yeah, shout out to Pancheros. Cut a check for me one time. Shout out to Panda Express also. That's what I'm getting to. Also, shout out Panda. 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 About to be the Panda. number one song in the world. I is hope it is. I cannot wait. I hope it is. So all all the critics and everything can get mad. That's good for I Brooklyn. I can't wait. It, it also just makes no sense. It's so insane. Like, how the fuck does Kanye sample a song, put it on his album, and then the original song ends up becoming way bigger than any song on the album? And to keep it a buck, like... Kanye cut off probably the best part of Panda because that second verse yeah, he, he goes off. What's and, the part that you think is the best part? Right, be, right before on Kanye's uh, "Father Stretch My Hands" part two, yeah. the best part is cut off right after uh, Kanye cuts it off right at the best part because he like you can't. I get I get how you know people. I get critics. I get what people say about designer, but you can't deny like how he was skating on. That part, the part that the part that Kanye cut off, he right. goes crazy. Like, you can't deny that shit. Broads in Atlanta. Hey, <laughs> so, so who was the first like real well-known rapper that you shot? And like, how did this Wiz. go down? Wiz. Yeah. How'd you get into that circle? Uh, well, the crazy thing is, I met Wiz like a year before I ever shot him. But okay. Wiz is like my favorite rapper like ever. Really? Yeah. So what you were on Cushion Orange Juice real early, or what was the first one? Star Power. You were so all yeah. all the early tapes. Okay. Yeah, Star Power. Yeah. Right. But, you, but you don't really smoke weed like that. So but it no. still appealed to you. You're just yeah, not like this. He made him. He still makes amazing music. Yeah. Oh, you still like him. I love. Yeah. I, I feel like I you really like the new album. I feel like. Wiz Khalifa to me Khalifa? I realize I'm probably Going to ruin my chance of Ever interviewing him But to me He's just become Profoundly boring Over the past couple of years I just don't really No, nah, he's it's, I mean He has he, But he's always been The person A visual rapper That rapped about What was around him And what he was doing right. Now he's just A rich nigga yeah. Raps about being A, a See, rich See that's nigga. the problem For me it's just, Yeah his, I'm not rich so Him I being really rich Is a little to too it. boring For me I, I, I fuck with it Just because I remember Like I remember Cushion Orange Juice And now I remember mm-hmm. like I think it was was it Taylor Alderdice where he was like flexing hard. Yeah, when was on the, I loved the Lex I mean, Luger beats and shit. Flexing. That, that was his era that I kind of liked. I love that Lex, shit. Lex and even Luger area. yeah, yeah, true. But even shit. even now, I still I still like love what what Wiz is creating. Yeah. But yeah, I like I like I like where Wiz is at now. Like I kind of I like where Wiz is at now with the shit. Really? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Maybe I got to check out that Khalif album. I never actually listened to it. He's got some joints. He got some like. hard shit about to come out too. How'd you shoot Rolling a papers uh, too? How'd you shoot a Metro Boomin cover story for Complex or whoever the fuck Fader. it was? Fader, yeah. Not Complex, Fader. Okay. Fader. How did you? Fader. What? You're a huge Fader <laughs> fan or what? Hell yeah. Do you, you're not on I staff love Fader. or anything. You just you, nah, they print all your shit. No, nah, they they just they um they office just love me and I love them back. They show you love when you go in there. It's like Twenty One Savage just showed up. Everybody's just like. <gasps> <laughs> Just take a step back. What's the? Have you been to Fader? You been to the office? Yeah, of course. And what's it like? Uh, it's just like an office. You know, people sitting on your desk. What's the racial breakup? I don't know. Is it a lot of white people? Is it no, overwhelmingly white? No, not even. It's diverse. Yeah. Okay. Black, Asian. You know. I like. I like. I fuck with Fader heavy. I like what everything that they do is like on point. I fuck with them. I like Fader too. But yeah. so how, how the fuck you shoot a Metro Boomin cover story? I don't. Did they hit you up and say we yeah. need you to go shoot this fool? Yeah, they hit me oh, and okay. said, "Yo, are you available these days to shoot this Metro uh, story?" I'm like, "Yeah, of course." Yeah, so you meet up with Metro Boomin, and what's that like? 
I've been on Metro. Oh, so you known him? Yeah. Right. He's a nice guy. Of course. Right. Leland. Leland so Wayne. What did you guys decide to do for the photo shoot though? Was there any like big crazy ideas? Or I whatever? just hung out with him like for like three days. Oh, okay. Is that how you prefer to do it? Is like just be a part of the entourage and just kind of get photos as yeah, it goes. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. So, what about some of these other ones? You got like Lil Uzi Vert. How do you start working with him? Oh, Uzi. So the hottest in the uh, world right now. It's man, P's and Q's. That is a it's tight the take. hardest yeah. song out. I think I like Canadian Goose a little Canadian more. Canadian Goose, Canadian is, Goose hard. is hard. Yeah. Uh, Man, I don't know any song title. I've been listening I to met, it, but I don't know the titles yet. When Car- Cardi came to Atlanta last last year, and he called me, he's like, "Yo, uh, I got a session with Uzi. Can you come?" So I was like, "Yeah, of course." So I pulled up. Cardi wasn't there yet, so it was just me and Uzi. And Hit up Cardi and be like, "Hey, I got a podcast called No Jumper. You want to come?" And he'll be like, "All right." <laughs> I, got you. I got you. So, uh, so yeah. Then he, um, so when I got there, Cardi and came in, so it was just me and Uzi. And ever since then, you know, we just been cool. Right. Hang out with him, whatever, you know. That's dope, man. I'm, I'm kind of like, I feel like the photographer lifestyle is a dope one, even though it's kind of like underrepresented now because people are so heavy with like video stuff and online because you really get to just like sit back and just like watch the shit transpire and shit like i don't know it's it's it must be a really cool way to like observe hell yeah yeah, yeah. it's tight as hell you ever see anything crazy when you're hanging out with these dudes what's the craziest shit you've seen with some industry ass rappers i don't think i can speak on that no i've seen a lot of bitch shit yeah a lot of whole niggas what in what way you just be scared yeah, I seen You've it. seen a lot of people get roughed up or just not even be roughed scared up. I just seen shitless? Them not get roughed up. Right. Yeah. But like, g- go the other way. Like, oh, I see blah, blah, blah over there. Let me go this way. Right. Who's the hardest dude that you ever shot photos with, like, in, in terms of some street shit? Like, wow. 21. Yeah. But did you see, like. No, I wasn't with him in, like, that environment. Right. But, yeah. but you never seen, like, motherfuckers pulling out AKs and, like, pounds no. of weed and all kinds of crazy ass street shit. I mean, you, you don't really haven't got that level of access. I mean, I'll be with Wiz. He'd be having pounds of weed. But probably not AKs. But not guns. <laughs> <laughs> so I can talk on the weed part, but not the guns. Right. Part. How do you, how you get an article in Hypebeast? Like, this is very uh, it's oh, very prestigious. Uh, I just had one, too, so I know it's very prestigious. Congrats that shit's that. tight as hell. Thank you. Like, yeah, it was cool, right? It's Hypebeast. It's like the holy mecca. Like. Hypebeast, I just want to say, are doing an IPO, and they're worth $300 million. I just saw this online. Hey. And also, I've been to the office, and it's a very small office for being worth $300 million. <laughs> wow. But I just couldn't believe it because you want to know why they're worth so much is because they have the, um, the online retailer thing. So oh, I wasn't, yeah, even, I wasn't even thinking about that. Yeah, you were. Right. You look at some that. shoes on there, and then it's like you can buy them right here. I guess they yeah, kill that, it with that. That makes perfect sense. Probably the smartest shit they've ever done. You That's read, how you make you some money the story off the website. And it says buy here. Exactly. Well and I've done it. Exactly. I've done it, and I felt I thought to myself, "God damn, I'm a hype beast doing this." But <laughs> yeah, wait. So what? They hit you up to do an article about you, or what? Yeah, they. <laughs> I don't. I mean, yeah. Should, damn, that's how it happens. crazy. But they they really flattered you too. Look, the photographer who captures hip hop's personal moments. I mean, that could that's be a description real. of almost anybody, that's but it's real. a very good compliment. Because when I was back and forth with them, I didn't hear anything from them for like a week, and then I hit them and said. Uh, let me know when you guys want to post it so I can send out like a blast. Right. This out. And then boom, it just came out. And he was like, oh, it's actually running in a few minutes. I didn't huh. know what it said. I didn't know what pictures they were used. I didn't know anything. You got to remind bloggers sometimes because bloggers have so much shit going on that they forget everything right. Yeah, hell yeah. Sometimes. I know with Gunner, I'm, I sh- I'm on it with Gunner. <sighs> Don't say it. hell yeah. Yeah, like I, I make sure I make sure that yeah, whenever because because we do sure we good. do like a, we do a, a monthly we do a monthly gallery with Gunner and I just yeah because I was I was taking so many fucking pictures I didn't know what to do with them so right. I was like let me just give them to my fam yeah so like we were we run a monthly and it's just I just even all photographers I just want to I'm, I'm I'm I try my best to make sure that they all get their credit mm-hmm. because. These people people do not like show them love on the yeah. site they use their pictures and don't like credit them and it takes two seconds websites too though because i feel like rappers kind of tend to not do, give dudes credit a lot of the time but it, I, I mean i don't i can't i can't really speak on other websites i just know that like i try my best to credit them because they deserve it like they all deserve it they put in hard work to like get certain shots and even you know everybody from from the cats i know the gunner like they put in a lot of work so i try my best to just make sure that we show them love on the regular yeah because it's like it's tough to make money off photography at least Hell give yeah. them the fucking credit because we all know that like it's it's just that's part- how you make money what credit. what do you mean because someone a 
a seed and be like, and I then, like that work. Right. I want that. Yeah. And they be trying to be because it's it's a weird world that we live in where it's considered okay. Like I'm looking at your Instagram right now that I consider it totally okay to take this photo of Uzi Vert, put it on the no jumper thing, give you photo credit, and then. Yeah. But isn't that that's weird because nobody would ever do that with a video. Like, like, well, okay, a short little video clip, but not on YouTube. Like, on YouTube, that would be considered, like, you would literally get kicked off the site if you fucking... Oh, just, like, took a video and put it on YouTube. Yeah, and re-upload it and start making money off it. You would either get it claimed by them, or you could get your account deleted if you do it enough, blah, blah, blah. But it's weird how with, with photo, it's considered, like, if you give credit, it's okay. You can take whatever you want. Yeah. It's a weird world we live in like yeah, that. Yeah, that's just... I don't that's know. Just, um, like I said, I try to show everybody. I try to show everybody love, especially photographers, man. Mm-hmm. Definitely. What would you guys say? Like, what, what what's the best way to get in touch with, to get your attention? Because I know you're a dude who you're able to like. You're in a weird position because you're able to just hand somebody a bunch of attention by giving them a plug on the site. Is it, what is it like for you dealing with that level of pressure? Um, it's not really pressure. It's yeah. not really pressure at all. Like, I just if it's if it's dope. It's easy to be attained and find and found. Right. Like people try to go through all these ways and like try to work the industry. I think mm-hmm. that shit is whack. Like just be dope. Right. At the end of the day, like and, and be dope. Like don't and be and be original. Right. Like a, a lot of guys just take and copy so many other artists and that shit is that shit is corny to me. Like all you have to do is be dope and like you will be found. Yeah. And like put together put together a, a project that you actually put effort into. And you'll be found. It's so hard for people because everybody thinks they're dope, even though they're not. You listen. If you have friends that rap, tell them they're whack. If they're whack, straight up, like right. you have to, because that steel sharp as steel. Like, but that's the weird thing about it too is that somebody could be a very good rapper and put out like a project that seems like it's good, but it's so much. Rapping is like an art form that is so personal yeah. and so based on personality that it's like. I mean that's that's everything. If they don't like you as a person, if they don't like the way you look on stage, the best thing that you could ever do is have a song that gets some momentum, but the momentum doesn't really rub off on you as a as an artist. Yeah, and they get they get probably like the most offended if you tell them like I don't, I'm not really feeling this, yeah. and it could literally just be ah, this isn't like what I feel, and they'll yeah. just be like fuck you, which is the most like normal <laughs> emotion you could possibly feel listening to a song, but then motherfuckers really will take that like really to heart, like. There's a girl that keeps hitting me up for an interview, and like I never heard her music. I don't know like what the fuck she thinks her music is like. But she every time I see her, would be like, I need the interview. I need the interview. And it's like I'll always be kind of like nice industry guy when she asks me, and I'll be like, Yeah, yeah, you know, like it could happen. Just keep putting in that work. Like I'll, I'll holler at you, blah blah blah. But then she like was hollering at me on Twitter the other day, like bringing it up again. And I'm just thinking in my head, I'm like, yo, like, why are you doing this? Like you fucking realize that the only way that I'm going to want to fuck with you for an interview is if I'm interested. And the only way I'm going to get interested in you as a musician is if you're popping in some way. It's like, can't you look at yourself like logistically, like realistically and like acknowledge that it makes perfect sense to you that I don't want to interview you right now? Like people are just so not self-aware, you know, people it's not self-aware and have yeah. shitty logic. Yeah. I think it like like what you were just talking about that time you take trying to tweet you every day, put that into your craft yeah. and like watch what happens. Yeah. Like. Yeah. It's, it's a, well, it's people a have well shitty logic, there. man. Yeah. They got weird logic. I don't know what the hell's wrong with people. <laughs> Oh man, uh, what else should we talk about here? What else do we need to know? What's going on with Ill Roots in the in the future? And the Illmore is 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 done, I guess, or what? Um, yeah. So so why did you end end up shutting oh, wait, down this wait. tradition? I went to the Illmore 2.0 at Coachella. Was that this year or? Oh wait, it's at this Coachella. Shit, it's this shit called Neon Carnival. Well, I, wait, I didn't go to that. I went to this other shit, but my friends told me about Neon Carnival. Neon Carnival. And that's what, the new version of the Ilmore? Are you offended by this, or is this true? Man, it, I, I don't know. I'm, this is my first time hearing about it. That shit crazy. Really? From what I've seen and heard, that shit's insane. It's like fucking, it's like in the middle of like this airplane hangar, and it's like airplanes taking off over you while you're in there. This is part of Coachella. It's not. It's just some shit. Oh. It's like how the Ilmore is. How the Ilmore is not a part of South Body. Yeah. It's, not just, a, it's just a party that, that you know. All like the cool kids go to. Okay. You know, it's like fucking Rihanna was there, Leonardo DiCaprio, Taylor Swift. It's nice. just, it's some crazy shit. It's I've like never Ferris, been to Coachella. It's a Ferris wheel. It's weird. I've never really been to a music festival in general. Either. I've been to South by, but I don't know. Like, I'm not really. I don't really. I feel weird about the 
festival thing. Like, I guess I'll go if I had, like, work to do and shit, but I ain't really trying to, like, sit around all day. I feel like so many people stink at festivals. Like, I, I don't know. I, I thought, thought that. I they thought don't? They don't. Nobody stinks. Really? I feel like people be so God. musty at festivals, bro. What are you smelling, man? No, you can't smell it. No, like, you could just, like, be around and you smell some musty well, That's people. the thing. Coachella's big as shit. You can't smell nothing but Damn. dust in her ass. If you guys go to Coachella, what's what's your outfits going to be like? Because I oh, feel I, like... like the flower crown. Oh, yeah. See, that's what I'm thinking, yeah. Wavy-ass sundress. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because chicks chicks definitely go to music festivals and use it as an excuse to just wear the weirdest outfits. And dudes, too. Like, you all see, like, a yeah. group of, like, four white guys together, oh, they and they're all wearing little white shorts with the tank top yeah. thing or something. Not like, even the tank top. It's a shirt with the... With the sleeves cut off. You probably see a dude with the flower crown. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. saw I saw some shit. Dog I filter. Motherfuckers be walking around with the dog <laughs> filter all day. Now we put we we had uh we had fits together for South by. Oh yeah, you gotta get fits for mad mad fits? people putting oh, fits, fits together. Fits, just like yeah. outfit, just yeah, like yeah. we put putting together shit for South by. I had um I had I had uh two of the, the three days I was wearing uh I had I made some custom uh, Mighty Ducks jerseys oh, from God. the movie. Like uh, I had the Adam Banks jersey. Wow. And then I had the uh, the Charlie Conway uh, USA joint. With you the any Hendrix. compliments on it? Uh, I, I compliment. Yeah, it was like the the people. If you knew, you knew, it and was you a knew how hard that is. Yeah, 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 and I, that's how I, I wanted it to be over people's heads. Yeah. But yeah, like because I fucked with it heavy. So there were like there were like a couple people that were like, "Yo, what the fuck?" And that. I take two people. Mind. I take two people out of like however couple hundred were there that's like noticed it to fuck with it. Like I'm cool with that. Well, that was good, man. Niche reference right there. Yeah. I fully appreciate that. Um, Hell yeah. But uh, nah, to answer your question about uh, the future, we just have we have like some special projects lined up, um, and you know we're we're gonna keep going. We're gonna we're gonna uh, focus on I think the the streaming. I really enjoy the streaming and think. What like, do you mean by that? Uh, we we have like a, a site where you just it just streams. So like so how does this work? Do they ever have like people broadcasting, or is it just music? I want that. You want I want the it. I want I want to do it, and I think and I think it's 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 able to be done. Right. So I, we're gonna try that. But um, aside from that, like hosting, um, I have uh, I partnered with one of my friends in Grand Rapids, name uh name Adishola, and we do this thing in Grand Rapids called the Complete Seven Dance Party, uh-huh. and it's just like a big party, and we are. This is the first time I'm ever speaking on it, but we're partnering with uh, this uh, this uh, company called uh, Text from Last Night, uh-huh. and oh, we're doing the, the website or whatever. Yeah, 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 and we're like basically expanding it and like gonna take it. Like we're starting in I think Detroit, and then like a college campus, like either Ann Arbor or East Lansing, and then we're probably gonna take it across the across the. U.S. I don't want to speak on it too early and jinx it, but I think that's what we. So is this one of the first like parties that you've promoted on your own? Um. Kind, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, is this like a whole new challenge, like in terms of not having the same promotional engine that you would normally have? Hell or? yeah, this is this is just this is just us, and then and then and then text from last night, just trying to put it together and mm-hmm. like just pr- present that present that energy of like you know that party to to. But yeah, that's that's this is my first time talking about it. But yeah, that's that's, that's kind of what we have going. That's what we're doing in the future. It's crazy because I feel like even though I'm doing the podcast thing and like the blog thing and the vlog thing and everything, I feel like the money really isn't doing events. But I'm going to be real with you. It's like, I don't want to do events. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it. It's yeah, so yeah, much yeah. pressure and so much stress. And no, just, it is. It's crazy, yeah. It is. I know like the homies in, uh, my homies uh, in Chicago that like they do events, they kind of stop just because of pressures too. Yeah. And it's weird, too, because, like, the way that... The money. The money. Well, the way that, like, actual promoters think about that shit is, like, I'm going to lose money on the majority of the shows I do, but then, like, some of them I'm going to make enough money to make up for the other shows that I lost money. Fuck all that, man. I ain't trying to get (laughs) involved in all that shit. Like, because I'm definitely, like, a person who, like, I like doing this content stuff, and people are like, yo, you got to do shows. You're going to make mad money. But it's like, I need somebody to, like, partner with or whatever, because I ain't really trying to fucking run around. I ain't trying to deal with a rapper asking me for more money at the last minute. He comes there. He wants to play for 10 minutes. It's like, I can't. I can't. Yeah, it's just too much. It's hard enough dealing with the egos of rappers who come in here, and I only got to lock them down for an hour, and it's easy. You know, like, get them to play a show, man. These motherfuckers are on another planet. What you got going on, man? Oh, uh, for the future? Yeah, what's up? Uh, Where you from? Oh, you from <laughs> I'm gonna bang on you real quick. No, I know already. Asked that. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Yeah, what's up? I see this pretty sweet sticker. Yeah. What's your favorite skate video? My favorite skate video. Well, I'm not the biggest. Like, I watch a lot of skate videos. I don't like study them, but I like the Baker videos in general. Uh, and I interviewed Beagle. You like the hood. 
I do good. because that shit. You know, they got Mad Three Six and the shit. They like they had just crazy weird. ass VX filming back then. Like everybody's a character. I get those videos because they just show so much personality in the Baker videos. You know, it's like it just really makes you feel like you know these dudes. And now I see all those dudes at the bar all the time, so I oh, shit. do know them a little bit. You yeah. ever seen Fully Flare? Oh yeah. Okay. You love it. You like the high production shit. But that's yeah. that. Spike Jones is. A but you shoot film. You should like VX videos. True. The grimy ass no, old I like school SD videos. I love Baker 3. That's good. You got a skate video pick? This is a pretty random thing. That The only one that I've watched fully and like can fully speak on is uh, the BBC joint. Okay. Yeah. Um, the ice cream shit. Yeah. Because I, I just remember that used to be on, I used to watch that just on loop, like with the sound off and I just used, the aesthetic of it, I just used to be like, damn, this shit is so hard to me. Right. Like, I don't know in the skate world if that's like whack or, or dope, but I just, that's, that, I, that's my pick. Uh-huh. I fuck with that heavy. Hey, you want to know other things that are interesting about this table? Number one, we got an ass pizza tag yeah, over there. That. Yeah. That's rare. I just met him yesterday. Met, yeah, ass pizza out here. And uh, and Kerwin, yeah, met him. Uh, they were at uh, the the house up staying at. Yeah. Yeah, I just I walked in. It was like it was ass pizza, Kerwin, um, and then Theophilus London. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Kerwin because he commented "fuck Adam" on this girl that I used to uh, hang out with his, uh, Instagram. Oh damn! So I don't know what exactly he's trying to like. I don't know what his angle is there. Like he's pretty much like only known for getting beat up. So I don't know if he wants to get another beating on his, under Whoa. his. Uh, I don't. I don't condone. You don't I, condone. I, it? I condone. I condone. But he's base, base positivity. I just don't understand that. Like, what is he? Like, what does he think's gonna happen here? Like, base positivity. Twenty sixteen. I don't know. Maybe he thinks that. Uh, maybe he thinks he's got some muscle or something. I don't know. I fuck. Hey, I, can we get no talking over there or quieter talking, please? Um, quiet. Yeah, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> but nah, shouts, shouts to Ass Pizza and Kerwin and uh, yeah, sure Theo. I fuck with all Kerwin, you owe me an apology or you're going to have a little, you're going to have to have a talking. Official beef. Somebody's going to have to hey. talk to him, man. That's, I just don't understand why he thinks he's doing leaving that comment. Like, what's what's his plan? That's what I want to know. Kerwin, what's your plan? Comment on this on YouTube, this Rope to, Gang. This has to be on our podcast. This has to be on our interview. <laughs> no, it ain't even like some beef shit. Know, it's just more I me was like. About to say. My question is it's like honest question to Kerwin is like, wh- like what do you want to do? Like, what do you? Wh- what is? What's the big idea here? Like, you want you want problems, then we can have problems. Like, I'm gonna have to make a vlog about have, you, son. I don't have problems with no one. Me neither. I no one's a lot of people. <laughs> but it's not some tough guy shit. It's more just like, wow, like you're crazy. Like, why did you say that? Like, you say you say rope gang. <laughs> hashtag rope gang. Shout out to the rope gang and the notification gang. Yeah, yeah. someone when I t- when I tweeted a picture, of it, someone added me hashtag rope gang. That's my crew now. Rope gang. Bro, that, that rope shit. I try, so They funny. wouldn't let me join the Bloods. They wouldn't let me join the Crips. They let me join the rope gang. Rope gang. I didn't really try to join the Bloods. But, rope gang. That was a joke. But uh, you see that guy right there? Yeah. He's planning my first photo show. I thought you were going to say he's a blood and a crib or no. something. <laughs> uh, he's a blood. Really? He's a blood. He's from Brooklyn. I'll show you old, uh, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But he's planning my first photo show. It's going to be like a um, it's gonna be like a party type shit. Where's That's it going to be at? Everywhere. You never did an official photo show, though. No. Let me get on it. Let me get on it. He already said. He already good. Okay, for sure, for sure. No, he already, we've been talking about this. For sure, because I'm, I'm with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to do Atlanta, L.A., Probably Chicago, shit like that. Yo, hit me up. I got you with the retweets. Especially since he's saying that you're really funny on Twitter, so I feel like I got to follow you. I'm not it, funny. Bro. bro. I'm not funny. <laughs> See? <laughs> bro, hilarious. Like, top, top five. Like, he's up there with, like, with comedians, bro. Really? Like, comedians. I don't think this shit's funny. It's just shit that just be in my mind, and I'll be like, damn. But okay. as discussed, you're kind of like a dark, quiet, 21 Savage type, That's so you, you ain't really out there laughing and everything. Bro, Gunner be having me dying, <laughs> dog. Having fun. Gunner, Gunner has Gunner and Gunner Loki has vines that go crazy and yeah, distress bread. Damn. Well, hey, uh, anything else we should know about before we wrap this up? Um, what should we? What should they know about this? Uh, um, that fucking Uniqlo car should drop on the twenty second. Does it? That's tight as hell. I'll keep an eye out for that. Hell yeah. Nah, you, like, man. you like original fake? Like the old shit? That I mean, I know about it a little bit, but I don't, I don't I'm not really like into like streetwear. Oh, I'm about to upload this picture of Rich the Kid to my Instagram. Well, there's something for people to look forward to, yeah. I'm rich. He's so <laughs> tight and he can skate. Yeah, he can. He can three flip. I was just watching the other day. He's doing I just crooks on the flat I was bar. so surprised. Exactly. Niggas hating because he wear all that Supreme and Palace plot twist. Plot twist. <laughs> you can actually go. Plot skate. twist. No, but th- that's like skating has been popular in rap for long enough that now it's like, oh, there are rappers who skated when they were 16 and they still know how to crook the flat bar. It's like, mm. it's cool to see that. Like, he might be the best like actual rapper at skating, I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure. 
Lil Wayne's been going hard for a while, but he never. He's definitely not hey, as good. Lil Wayne got better though. Lil he's Wayne has definitely better, gotten better but over the years. A while. Slowly over the years, but the, that's what's cool about Lil Wayne is that you actually are like, well, that is kind of what skating's really like. If you're just a regular person who gets into it, you don't get good overnight. You get good over the course of like many, many years. You know. Yeah, random. You fuck. You fuck with Vine. I look at it once in a while. I fuck with Nick Coletti. That's okay. That's yeah, the yeah. Closest yeah. connection to Vine. <laughs> Bro, we be on Vine. Really? We be on Vine. How many followers do you guys get? Not not like Kicked on Vine, up? but like more so like we, like a lot of the reason why some of the vines go off is because Gunner. Okay. He's lying. A lot of people's a lot of people's tweet vines get traction because of Gunner. Can we dress you up like Twenty One Savage? Draw all the tattoos on your face and like give you the all red outfit and then make like a parody video. Slick. That's Slick. What I'm do. No, I don't know. I'm not gonna do no parody. Hold on, hold on. No, yeah. He, I'll he, be in for Halloween. <laughs> I could see Twenty One not having the best sense of humor about somebody dressing up like him. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't condone that. This is cool. This is a Twenty One Savage fan podcast. Twenty One Savage dog. appreciation. Appreciation. For Hell yeah, I'm with that. I'm with it too. I'm with it. He's amazing. Straight up. I want him on the spot, but he can't get on a plane anymore. Yeah, is that, yeah, he can. Go. That's what they told me. Oh yeah, you. I don't know what the case was. He's but a terror. He, he did 9-11. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there's a t. <laughs> there's a t-shirt or a tweet. Twenty one Savage did 9-11. Hell no, nah, dog. Twenty one Savage. Or just 9/11. new rapper 9-11 Savage, and it's like. <laughs> It's like 9-11 Savage That's fine That could be some kind of Like parody thing Where we could have Like a dude No parodies Cause no. he's not gonna like that He's not no. gonna like it That's why it's all hypothetical But imagine like Like Osama Bin Laden But like Photoshop his face Onto 21's body And then it says 9-11 Savage Okay That'd be kind of funny I guess right There you go I don't know. Like, Are people ready for us To just be brainstorming Meme concepts on air Like this, yeah. this is how it happens Like 100% Combine a terrorist attack And a rapper What can we do 100% Watch it Watch it When you post you this guys, Hold on Hold on You guys ever seen You ever seen Booty Math I love Booty Math booty He's supposed math. to do the podcast booty He's math so math funny here, please? Yes please booty We're booty trying to uh, <laughs> Did you see where he Where he put the people Pedigree in on, Someone was getting Pedigreed on top of 9-11 On the World Trade Center Yes Pe- Yes Pedigree <laughs> yes. What's that mean The Triple H The Triple H movie? Uh, Triple H oh, uh, okay. finisher. The he, he did that on top of on top of the World Trade Center. <laughs> hey, I don't give a fuck. Wait, yeah. booty maps gonna be on here? That's yeah, we talks. talked about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't care if people if people get mad at me for laughing at that shit. That shit was funny. I don't, <laughs> give, a damn, dog. I don't give a damn. That shit was funny, dude. Shout to booty maps. It's been a long time since nine eleven. Like you got to be able to sneak a few little yeah. laughs. Listen, in know. a couple years, this is gonna be like people are gonna cook. This is a joke some comedian told, but people are going to cook hot dogs and hamburgers on nine eleven. Like it's going to happen. Why? Just to be American? Look like, at like, like look Fourth at, of July. Like yeah, yeah like exactly. look at look at like we celebrate like we celebrate like we already celebrate fucked up shit. Yeah, it's, it's places like times where there was like tragic events. But it's not like oh, it's Pearl Harbor Day. Let's go make some fucking dogs. Man, look, I think I think nine eleven is going to be that day where like people are going to because nine eleven is a way bigger deal than like Pearl Harbor and a lot of. You know, generally speaking, because it killed like a lot of like people in New York in the middle of fucking the day. But I mean, plus it was closer to like the internet, so like yeah. more information of it came out. Too. Yeah, yeah. Pearl, yeah. Pearl Harbor was maybe like had more of an effect because of the reaction that we had. Wow, I can't think of anything more off topic than me discussing the <laughs> Jet not, Fuel. Not Jet Fuel. Can't melt steel beams. <laughs> Twenty One Savage can't melt steel beams. Hey, wow. <laughs> That's what that sword on the middle of his face can do. Dead ass. That sword melted from the jet fuel. Wow. Anyway, you guys want to shout out your Instagrams and stuff? Hell uh, yeah. Um, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, Skywalker, S K I G H W A L K E R. Um, follow Ill Roots. Sna- yeah, follow Ill Roots, Ill Roots, the Illmore, Ill America, all that. Definitely. Shout out Mike Wack, shout out Mike Carson, shout out um, our writers, some of the best writers in the world, Peyton and Eric. Shout out uh, all my Chicago people. Joe Fresh Goods. We gotta get Joe Fresh Goods on here. Okay. He's he's fire. Uh-huh. Joe Fresh Goods. Shout out to Fat Tiger, King Rello, Vic, Ugly Brandon. All y'all, y'all my brothers. Love y'all. Hey. Uh, follow me on Twitter uh, at Bryson Tiller. <laughs> it's it's Gunnerstall dot us. So G U N N E R S T A H L dot U S. That's Instagram. But then it's Twitter. Twitter is Bryson Tiller. <laughs> Yo, you got to tell, tell them the Bryson Tiller. Oh, yeah. My uh, Twitter is 21 Savage. <laughs> at 21 Savage. Uh, yeah. Um, can I do a shout out? Yeah. Can I do my shout out? Let's hear it. Um, Blood Gang. I don't really know who to. I'm going to shout out the last few people I've been texting. Uh, shout, out, shout out Siege. Shout out Michi. Shout out Mike Will. 
You've been texting Mike Flex. Will. That's like my big bro. Really? Yeah. I feel like we should have talked about that already. That's interesting. Oh, you... Big shout out to Brian Dorsey, too. Brian Dorsey's the future. Shout out Mike Will. He could definitely come on this podcast. It'd be totally fine. Oh, shit. I should have should, come you should with just be me. here? Bring Miley with him? Yeah, you might be able to do that. Maybe that'll be a separate episode. <laughs> They might take the attention away from you guys. <laughs> Miley definitely would. Miley uh, would. I takes Cliff. Shout out Key. Fat Man Key. You like Fat Man Key? I love Key. You, has he Hello? Been, do you want Key on here? Yeah. I mentioned it on Twitter once or twice, but uh, no, you know what? What was the podcast? He lives here now. Yeah, I know. I've seen him at the bar before, but I didn't know it was him until later, but somebody mentioned it. But the, we were talking about it the other day when we were doing a podcast. I forget. We started uh, quoting Hadouken, Hadouken, you know, yeah. Ryu shit. You know that? Mm-hmm. I love that song. That song with him and Mecco? Yeah. Yeah, shout out, uh, shout out Taco. Taco Odd from Future. Odd Future. Yeah. Okay. Uh, shout out my nigga Cissé. Who's that? Places, places plus, plus faces. Are you going to the joint Saturday? I'm gonna be at Coachella. Damn. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm actually. I think I might. I might uh, do a little hosting on that. Mm-hmm. He has a rooftop party uh, on Saturday. Places plus faces. What are your hosting skills? What do you do? What does hosting mean to you? Man, um, just a, a catalyst for for high energy. Right. Like. So, will you go on stage and scream and fucking run back and forth or what? I definitely. I de- I don't really scream too much, but there's definitely some running back and forth. Like. Right. Like don't let don't let the girth fool you. Like. I got quick feet. No, I think <laughs> girth is good because then you have more of an appearance. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, no, I definitely make sure, like, case in point, the Ilmore. Like, when I hit the stage, I would tell people, like, I know y'all are here thinking it's a concert, but when I'm on the stage, it's a party. Yeah. So, like, let's make it as such. Right. Shout out to Sasha and Claire, by the way, too, from Scoremore. I love them. I need to get, like, when I DJ some shit, like, which I have done in the past, but I ain't really, like, a high-energy DJ on stage. I need, like, people to, like, run around on stage for me. because I, I ain't really trying to. Yeah, there you go. Hit me okay, up. Let's yeah. do it. Like, I'm dead serious. Like, right. let's do that shit. Because right. I'm, when, when I'm, when I'm on there, I, I. I guarantee you it'll be a party, like mm-hmm. flat out. Just I'm like Fredo Santana. I'm not like moving around too much, you know. Like if I'm hosting your shit, if I'm standing there, I ain't, you know, jumping <laughs> up and down. I'm like, I don't know if that's on brand for me. I think, I think, but maybe it could. Be. I think the jump around tendencies. I think there's tendencies. A Jace. A Jace. Yeah, yeah. House of Pain. A Jace. Shout out to Rosenberg. <laughs> Shout out to Rosenberg. Yeah. All right. Well, is Rosenberg with Ebro? Uh, they both work at Hot 97. Yeah. So yeah. Oh. But Jace is from his his own shit. Yeah, but yeah. I listen to Juan Epstein and I always hear him say it once Hell in a yeah. while. Yeah, yeah. And I fuck with uh, his cheap heat, his wrestling podcast. Do you? Okay, yeah. I've, I've always wanted to check uh, out his wrestling. Uh, Rosenberg stuff. and uh, so Rosenberg and Ebro, they're two separate people. Yeah, Ebro is an old. <laughs> <laughs> Ebro got a big ass beard and he he's like light skinned. Hey, and, fuck Ebro. And Rosenberg is just white. Fuck Ebro. Why don't you like him? Because that Uzi interview? No, the Ray Shremer. No. Oh, you didn't like that he shit. He tried to violate my partners. So what? Those are your boys? Yeah. You kind of look I'm, like them, actually. I'm ear drummer records. Are you? You look like you would. I'm signed. Mike will sign. You kind of look like you take the two race murmurs right, and you look, like mush them together. They kind of look I'm like gonna you. I'm going to tell you the story. I'd be telling you you look like mad people. We was, it, we was in the club. I had mad bottles. And on the other side, Mike will had mad bottles. So we started seeing each other bottles. So I went over there and hollered at him like, yo, I'm trying to be down. He was like, all right, bet. I'm going to call you. He called me in a week. He signed me 100 M's. Only photographer to be signed the honey M's. At what point in the story does it become fiction? Because it's I was all, with I you think, until I the think hundred. That was all true. I think that was all true. A hundred million dollar photography co- contract. M's. <clears throat> two phones. <laughs> I noticed you with the two phones. What is one's for the plug and one's for the low, or, or what? Well, How's this work? Two phone shorty. Is that what he says in the song? One for the plug and one for the low. Oh, uh, was it Kevin the Eights? Kevin, Kevin Gates. Gates? Uh, I don't know. I'll listen I, to Kevin I don't know. <laughs> no? I don't listen to Kevin Gates either. <laughs> really? I, I really don't. don't to I thought you were Kevin Gates. I don't really yeah. like Kevin Gates. He's scary. And he kicked a he kicked a girl. He that did. shit ain't cool. He sung Blink One Eighty Two though. I fuck with him for he that. Fox with Blink One Eighty Two. Yeah, yeah, that was my age again. We, we don't did that. hit girls. By yeah, the way. It we may, do not. We you do should not. not hit a girl. I, no. Never. Don't never. do that. That's bad. And you big as shit. Like look at me. If a girl, if I hit a girl, they gonna laugh. Kevin Gates, he big as shit. Yeah. But you Ian Connor's size, and look what they're saying he did. Oh. Hey, no Shout Ian. Shout out to my no, slime, Ian. Man, yeah. no bad talk about Ian. No, he, you, helps, you, he helps me a lot. I fucks with Ian a yeah, lot. That's why we we don't we don't discuss Ian Connor's uh, legal issues on on air. But yeah, shout out Ian. He helps me. Uh, yeah. A lot. yeah. All right, we gotta end this. We gotta wrap this shit up. <laughs>
I'm with We're it. going in mad directions. We're talking about Ian Connor, Pearl Harbor, et cetera, et cetera. Nah, but for real, man, thank you. Thank you for having us. Best, coolest podcast in the world. Yeah. This is my first one. It's an honor to be on here, like flat out. Off Happy top. to have you guys on here. No yeah, jumper. Thank you, man. Rope gang. Ro- Fuck Ebro. Hey, Rope gang. <laughs> Rope Ebro, gang. I'm so cool with Ebro. I never met him, but I, I got respect you, all Pontiac, of those Michigan with Gunner Stall hates you, Ebro. Wow. <laughs> go in, go in. No, but you have a pretty good legitimate reason there. I, li- yeah. I watched the boys get out the mud. Don't yeah. you take nothing from my people ever in your life. Right. Ever. Especially if you're an old guy in New York. Exactly. Then you old as we'll shit. We'll be hating on the little boys ever. in Atlanta, right? Don't ever do that. No, they're from Mississippi, but still, don't, don't ever do that. Crooked letter. All right. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out. YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. My Instagram's at Adam22, spelled out. Follow on some shit on Twitter. Uh, check out onsomeshit.com. Snapchat is onsomeshit.com. Thank you very much for these guys for coming through. Check us out almost every goddamn day for new podcasts. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> That was fun.